Hi, I'm Ms. Tyler, and welcome to a special edition of Context for Kids, Sukkot 2017. Now, last year, we did a short little video on how you do a sukkah if you waited until the last minute and you really don't know what to do, and we talked about some options, so that's fun. Everybody likes to make forts in the house, right? I mean, it's just one of the classic fun ways of doing these. If you saw it last year and you're living in a place where you can do a sukkah outdoor, you know, if you're a lot like in Siberia, that would be bad, you know, but a sukkah is just a small temporary structure that the men, the Israelite men, um, when there was a temple, were commanded to go to Jerusalem in the fall at the end of the harvest season, at the beginning of the new civil, well, we're not going to talk. <laughs> There were a whole bunch of different beginnings to the new year based on temple functions. And, um, but that's, that's a little too complicated to go into now, so let's not do that. But at the end of the agricultural year is the season of our joy. Why? Because you don't have to work hard anymore. Because these people were farmers, they worked really hard. And one of the things it tells us to do for Sukkot is to wave goodly branches and the fruit of goodly trees. Do I have this one? Yes, I do. So I'm going to go over the different species it talks about in Scripture when it talks about this in Leviticus 23. Now we have willow. Very nice. A lot of you might have willow in your yard. I bet not many of you have myrtle in your yard. In your large, in your, your yards. Anyway, this really smells good. This is myrtle. And this in here is palm. And everybody's seen palm, right? Especially if you're in Florida or California. Or like my friend Noah who lives in Hawaii, who I'm jealous of forever and ever and ever. But I love him anyway. And my friend um, Joel and Gabby's kids, they all, they all live in uh, Costa Rica. Lots of palm there. But anyway, so these were talked about in scripture and talks about um, the fruit of a goodly tree. And this is called etrog. And you're saying that's a lemon. This is not a lemon. Looks like a lemon, doesn't it? It's all ridged, and it's really funky looking, but these grow in Israel, and you can see there is a, it's called a green end and a stem end. And so, when we do the prayers, you, first time you pick up, this is, this is short form is the lula, even though this, this thing right here is the lula, but the whole thing together. Okay, it's called the lula. So, when we pick it up the first time, because this is fun. Now, all these guys, like, you know, millions of people would be, like, in, around the temple, you know, and they'd be doing this, and they'd be doing it as one. And it must have created a sound like an incredible rushing wind, like the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see a lot of... It's just, it's just awesome. It must have been a big huge, mighty sound in the temple at the time of the goat in the fall. So, if you don't have these, if you guys didn't get them, you know what? Honestly, get some goodly branches from the backyard. Make a family thing of it. If we want to celebrate the life of our Messiah and follow him and do things like he did, you know, the way he did, and understand his life, it one of the best ways is to understand the feasts of the Lord of Leviticus 23, and they also talk about them in other places, in, in Numbers, and they show up in the Gospels a lot. So, how would he have done this? How would they have done this in the temple? Well, they would have taken their etrog in their dominant hand, because it's, it's heavy, and stem down, and they would have said a blessing, and I'm going to put it up on the screen for you, and I'm going to say it very slowly in Hebrew. So if you want to practice it, you can. And I'll also have it in my blog so you guys can print it out if you want. And that's at www.contextforkids.com, Sukkot 2017 teaching. All right, so here we go. We're going to go, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddushenu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Netilat Lulav, Amen. And it means, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments 
and has commanded us concerning taking the lulav. Taking up the lulav, sorry. Okay, then we want to shake it. So we're going to turn our etrog over. Remember, it's not a lemon, even though and it smells like a lemon, <laughs> but it's a different species. Anyway, so here we go. And they would make it sound like an incredible wind. So first, we're going to pretend I'm facing east instead of north, okay? So we're going to face east. In my house, that would be like this. But you can't tell, and if I hadn't told you, you wouldn't know, but we face the east. And we go one, two, three. Except we don't say one, two, three, okay? I'm just doing this for instructional purposes. So we go one, two, three. And then we go to the south. One, two, three. And then over our shoulders, three. Oh, you see the debris. One, two, three. And then we do up, 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 and down, down, down. Okay, and there, you shook the lulav. You did it. It's a positive commandment, and it's something really fun to do. Now, when we're doing the lulav, you know, shake, taking up the lulav and shaking it, we don't get silly, okay? Because it, it's serious, it's kind of, but we have a good time. But it's serious. Now, after we've shook the lulav, and after everybody's shaking the lulav, you know, it's Sukkot. It's the season of our joy. It's party time. Then it's time to, you know, like dance, and, you know, and we go, you know. Yeah, I bet you didn't think I could do that. Anyway, you know, we just have a great time. It's a feast. It's not called a feast because it's just like we're supposed to, all the, no. It's a joyous party. And I hope that at the very least, you guys will make yourself a fork in the living room because, you know, who doesn't like to do that? Get some goodly branches from the backyard if you do not have a lulav. And I ordered mine. I actually ordered mine especially early for you guys so that I could do this video for you. Um, say the prayers and do that together. And it just gives you more of a glimpse into the life of our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. Anyway, um, I love you. Oh, and we're going to have a, let's see, at my house, we're going to have special foods. We're going to have really good meats and we're going to have really good cheeses. Um, and we're going to have really good bread and fruit and dessert and all sorts of wonderful things. It's a part, a feast, a Leviticus 23 feast is a party in God's honor. That's why we, that's why the, the word told us to celebrate them forever because they're parties in God's honor. Not only that, but every single feast, if you study them, and not many people do, so it might be something you want to look into as you get older. I'm actually working on two books about them right now, but don't hold your breath. They're not going to be out anytime soon because it takes a lot of study. But the more we learn about them, the more we see our Messiah in their fulfillment. You know, Yeshua, Jesus, he already fulfilled Passover and Pentecost. Of course, you probably already know that, right? And in the future, he will come and he will be the fulfillment of the fall feast. Now, we've already had two of them, Rosh Hashanah, also known as Yom Kippur, but it's really a holiday that has no name in scripture, only descriptions. And there's a reason for that. But we're not going to go into that now. And then there's Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. We just had that this weekend here at my house where we fasted all day. And I did a, uh, a video like that uh, about that last year called, you know, what does it mean to afflict ourselves? And you can look that up. Of course, this year it's kind of <laughs> to next year. But now, focus on Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to give you a hint about why Tabernacles is important and has been partially fulfilled. See, in John chapter 1, the Gospel of John chapter 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. Hmm. Sounds to me like that is our Messiah's birthday. That's what we celebrate it as. Anyway, anyway, I love you. I'm praying for you. I want you to have a wonderful week of Sukkot because it is a seven day feast. And then there's another holy day after it called Simchat Torah. And um, just have
have a great feast, okay? Enjoy celebrating God for a week. I love you. I'm praying for you all, and I hope you have a wonderful week studying scripture together as a family. Bye-bye now.